Sufis, and Sufis across the board, there was a follow-up of 41 years, so quite a substantial length, and they found there was a significant prevalence of osteoarthrosis in the severe slips. Goodman from uh, Cadaverica studies actually delineated the changes in morphology, and you can see from this clinical photograph, you get the loss of the anterior concavity and a prominence of anterior metaphyseal region here, and an increased posterior concavity as you go from normal to mild to uh, moderate to severe slip. And then following that, Abraham actually had two treatment arms or two uh, arms to his study in patients undergoing primary total hip replacement. He found in one group which uh, had previously Sufi as a uh, child who went on later to requiring primary total hip surgery and another group that had uh, primary osteoarthrosis. He found that the, the overall incidence or uh, the actual total hip replacement occurred significantly earlier, an average of 11 years earlier than in compared to the primary osteoarthrosis group. And also the wear characteristics were completely different in terms of primary osteoarthrosis and also... Um, in terms of remodelling of uh, post-pinning in situ, a lot of the work came initially from Bruce Forster from Adelaide Group in 1990 who's published on that and showed that there is remodelling potential. It's about 90% of mild soup is remodel and mild to moderate and with severe there was only an uh, estimate of about 50% actually remodel. So the question remains, can the proximal femur remodel enough post to be a slip? Uh, the principal investigator has previously published on this um, in regards to APO from 2011. He had a substantial number in terms of 59 hips and a decent follow-up of 17 months average. Uh, he, he applied the, the two radiographic parameters which were previously mentioned in the earlier talk. Uh, one was alpha angle which has previously been established and also the novel introduction of client line offset. And he found that both these increased significantly um, in that 17 period, suggesting there was remodelling in mild to moderate Sufis. However, not severe, not, notably severe when included in this, in this actual uh, review series. This is an example of a Sufi that was severe that was pinned in situ, and you can see quite clearly the prominence of the anterior metaphyseal flare, and this you can see how this clearly from in, uh, leading to impingement and osteoarthrosis can develop from this. This was subsequently treated with capital realignment using a modified done procedure. Um, with fixation with the pair of thumb and pins and also access obtained as you can see through trochanteric osteotomy. The modified done procedure for capital realignment is difficult from your standard surgical hip dislocation. It identifies a different interval and respects the vessels, which are the most important in terms of preserving the blood types of the femoral head or the capital segment. So the question remains, why change from pinning in situ? This relates to the complications that result from this with the FAI and leading to osteoarthrosis and also the associated 40% ABN rate with pinning in situ of severe Sufis published in the literature. Um, this, and also read out from Dr Gomez's talk on gait dysfunction. You've got improved long-term dysfunction. Another argument to try, um, circumvent happening. The question remains with osteotomy versus acute correction. This has been blurred in the literature because the previous osteotomies, acuniform osteotomies and intratrochanteric osteotomies, uh, didn't uh, seem to preserve the actual posterior leaf vessels and often further. So they stand the reason that the vascular supply to the head will be compromised and then hence the high complication rate, ABN rate with this literature. And from Gantz's actual uh, cadaveric specimens where he injected uh, plasticine polymer into the actual uh, vasculature around the femoral head, he demonstrated that the branches from the medial circumflex um, amalgamated with the posterior retinacular vessels and this again is identified as the posterior leaf vessels and this is pivotal in terms of treatment of this condition. So the aims of our project was one, to assess an established technique of capillary alignment. The modified done has been de described previously by Zybarth and colleagues from Bern. It's more so not to focus on the actual technical aspects of that procedure itself, but rather to explore the re reproducibility of it in the hands of other surgeons and also to apply the um, radiographic parameters mentioned previously to uh, determine whether anatomical correction or 
restoration of proximal femoral geometry has been returned and to quantify post-operative procedure or outcome rather. Um, this is highlighted earlier. I need, need to go through it again. Um, in terms of the method, it was a retrospective review. Um, it did achieve ethics approval and there was a standardised system of prospective X-ray series that consisted of AP and bilateral. Um, a bone scan was conducted at three days post-op and also at six to eight weeks post-op. Um, and the pre-op slip, slip angle was noted according to Southwick and the post-op variables recorded were alpha angle and Klein's offset. It was a single surgeon case series and the study period was over a two year period. Um, notice there was 11 patients considered and there was equal, equal proportion between male and female and slightly in favour of the left side. And the so, notably there was one inclusion of a moderate Sufi which just fell below the criteria of Southwick but was at the higher end. And this one presented after progression after Kinning Institutes. Notably, the number of previous procedures performed in this patient population. In three patients, there was a total of six procedures performed previously, with one patient having three attempts at pinning before actually being uh, undergoing realignment. And this was also performed elsewhere. The follow-up range was between 11 and 26 months. The primary endpoints were, as we mentioned before, radiographic. The alpha angle pre was a me median 92 and post was a median 48. This uh, correlated to an improvement alpha angle overall of 44.5. Uh, Klein's was noted improvement in only one except one patient, which I'll go through later in terms of complications. And most notable, there was the development or observation of a pistol grip deformity noted in three patients. In terms of a pistol grip deformity, as you imagine, it's a handle. It obliterates the normal contour of the femoral neck. This has implications in terms of causing a difference of impingement that's been created by the surgery and a lateral impingement. The belief from this, the group is that with the procedure itself, you actually raise a periosteal flap preserving the posterior release vessels. Uh, when you align the capital segment, the periosteal flap, there's a potential space between that and the actual cancellous bone underlying. And in the post-operative period, in the healing period, you get a bony response. And as a result of this potential space, in three cases, there was noted this pistol grip deformity and believe this is a, a healing response. In terms of the complications, as noted, there were three cases of AVN, but two were pre-existing um, and been treated elsewhere. They were designated uh, bone scan as having a vascular uh, supply to the head. And there was only one uh, case of AVN through the series. She was noted to be a patient who had juvenile rheumatoid arthritis who went on further, unfortunately, and then subsequently a total hip replacement. The other com complication to note was chondrolysis. There were no deep or superior infections or wounding. In terms of comparison to the uh, original pioneers of the technique, uh, Boston and Byrne experience from two different centres, uh, they had a series of 40 that was recently published. In their group, only eight were severe and five were unstable. In terms of their radio radiographic outcomes, they excluded any pre-existing AVN, so you have to make this into our data. But the mean alpha angle was a similar rich degrees, uh, and they also noted there was no, they had no chondrolysis in their group. I think from conclusions that be drawn from this, there is limitations um, to infer that an restoration of anatomy implies that a nest is going to get lead to a functional income. This can't be concluded. The further scope for this uh, research project is to actually uh, assess these patients and to actually see whether it does translate into improved functional outcome. It definitely improved in terms of restoration of proximal femoral geometry and of normal anatomic alignment.